Good evening, brothers and sisters. I'm very, very happy to welcome you to the new edition of our show, Speak of Africa. Today, I have with me a brother from Cameroon. His name is Charles Ekerum. Charles Ekerum is an ordinary guy, but he has gone through so many unusual incidents. As a result, he has really changed. An incident that really changed his life is his confrontation with the armed forces of the United uh, Repub the Republic of Cameroon. Charles Ekerum is a US citizen. He went to Cameroon recently to assist in the burial of his wife's relatives. Unannounced, soldiers of La République du Cameroon picked him up and beat him up and left him almost for dead. In fact, it's really a miracle that Charles Ekerum is alive today. So we want the American public to see what happens to you as an American when you travel to the war zone that has become La République du Cameroon. We want you to know the kind of treatment that they give to you. They don't even care whether you're an American citizen or not. They would maltreat you. So don't listen to what I'm saying. I want Mr. Charles Ekerum to speak for himself, and you're going to hear him right now. Welcome to the show, Mr. Charles Ekerum. Thank you very much. So how are you doing? Oh, by the grace of God, I would first of all say I'm fine, and thank God for giving me another chance to be alive. Yes. When I heard your story, I decided that we really wanted you to come to this show and tell the people, because you are an American citizen, you went home to assist in the burial of your wife's relatives, and you did nothing wrong, and the soldiers of La Republic beat you up and left you almost for dead. I hear that if not of Jesus Christ, you will not be here to speak to us again. So seeing you is more like somebody who has risen from the dead. So I really pray to Jesus for giving you a long life. You have a new lease on life. So now you can do what you did not really accomplish. So you can finish it. And so how did it happen? Precisely on the 25th of January, that was a Thursday, mm -hmm. 2018. Mm -hmm. I was coming from Mamfe after some financial transactions. After having crossed approximately 15 checkpoints, mixed checkpoints with heavily armed military men. On getting to Bisonga Bank, where the army base is, I know what it is. Mm -hmm. surprisingly, more than close to 50 military men just pounced on me. We were approaching the, the, uh, the barricades. Mm -hmm. I saw probably it's a normal routine that we have to slow down. They, we didn't even slow, they just stopped us, bounced on me directly. Mm -hmm. So I believe an information must have been given mm -hmm. throughout the course of going through these other checkpoints. Okay. They just caught me immediately, handcuffed me, tore my dresses, all my, my shirt and everything that was on me. Yeah, I saw the pictures. Mm -hmm. I saw the they pictures. tied my eyes, mm -hmm. kicked me to the floor. Mm -hmm. Tied my legs, mm -hmm. started kicking me, mm -hmm. beating me, mm -hmm. using the boot of the gun mm -hmm. on me, mm -hmm. dragging me along the floor. Mm -hmm. I did not even have any chance of saying anything. I shouted, I kept telling them, I'm a US citizen, I'm coming here just not to assist for a funeral program. My wife has lost the uh, more a relative who's so dear to me, that's why I'm here. They did not listen. So when you yeah. say, uh, said you were a U.S. citizen, what did they say? Nobody cared. This, instead, I heard them as I speak French, but I just kept quiet because there was no way. They told me to stay quiet. They kept saying in French, I'll repeat what they said. Voilà les gens là. Voilà ceux des gens qu'on a conscience là. Voilà les terroristes là. I kept saying, I am a U.S. citizen. I am, have nothing to do. First of all, I don't know why you are arresting me. I'm he, just coming here just for a purpose. I'm going to the next vi neighboring village called Mbakem village for a funeral. But Mr. Charles Ekerum, we know who is involved in the politics of Nambazonia. You are, you are not even part of this. So why did they arrest you? 
I don't know why they arrest me. And I think from every evidence, after all the investigations they made, after all the enhanced interrogation, even without contact, because I kept shouting, contact the American embassy. Before coming to the United States, I have a valid visa from the Cameroon embassy. And on arrival at the airport, I had a valid entry stamp on my passport. I have my vaccination and everything. So if I was to be arrested, it's not you at the airport who has to, not you here who has to arrest me. I would have been arrested at the airport if I was not, if I was an activist or if I wasn't innocent or the Cameroon embassy wouldn't have even, first of all, given me a visa. I reiterated to them that I was in Cameroon in September to bury my mom. Okay. I've also come back again here with a second visa. Mm -hmm. Nobody listened. They just kept beating me, beating me. They said they're going to kill me. And these okay. guys were ready to kill me. Indeed, they were ready. Okay. I heard them saying in French, where they were dragging me. I was blind. I don't know where they were taking me to. Into mm -hmm. a bush or to somewhere. I don't know. Okay. Saying, look, they, they always were saying in French, mm -hmm. which, uh, Finish on avec lui une fois ici. Let's just finish with him there. Don't read him well. Directement sur la poitrine. Just mm -hmm. give him a bullet directly in his chest. On jet, on jet cette bêtise ici, on part. And let's throw this coward here and let's go. Mm -hmm. Within them, they were disputing. Attends le commande du général. Mm -hmm. Attends le général. Mm -hmm. Which means let's wait for the general's command. Okay. Then within this time, mm -hmm. I was being tortured. Mm -hmm. Tortured indeed. Mm -hmm. Like the images I used to see on TV. So, did you see any soldiers or any armed people from Ambazonia? I did not even see anybody because within that period, this what ensured I couldn't, the pains were very excruciating that I couldn't even bear it. Okay. They took blocks and hit while I was lying on the floor mm -hmm. with my hands. They took blocks and hit on, break the blocks on my head. Okay. While I was lying with my hands directly tied right, behind okay. me, mm -hmm. they were. Stepping on me with their boots and kicking me and saying it was uh, It was close to death. That's okay. what I can say. So when I look at the experience that you've gone through So it just tells me that if you an American citizen With all the legal rights you can experience this type of torture What more for people who come from that part of the world who are Cameroonians? Do you think? You are exceptional. I Am not exceptional. It is by the grace of God that I was able to make it alive. Okay. Um, I pity mostly ordinary Cameroonians, Cameroonians mm -hmm. precisely those from the Southwest and the Northwest. What I watched and saw on TV and on the YouTubes, mm -hmm. I experienced it first hand. Okay. First hand, so I can only imagine what they go through. Because I saw a lot of what happened. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to cut your shirt. While I was still at 8 o'clock, after all those beatings, mm -hmm. a colonel came from the gendarmerie. Okay. Who told me that he's taking me to the gendarmerie brigade. Okay. For further enhanced inter okay. interrogations. Okay. When we got there, he told me that he confided in me that they have told him the reason why they caught me, that the information was being given by the control, mixed control, that an American, one of those Americans, or those who sponsor terrorism mm -hmm. in the Southwest province, mm -hmm. and those who are actually actively participating in the secession of the Southwest and Northwest province mm -hmm. from the general from Cameroon, mm -hmm. has come, mm -hmm. and that we at once was sponsoring this. I said, no, I don't even have any idea about this. But uh, everyone coming from the United States, from the diaspora in general, is considered a terrorist, okay. a secessionist. So don't you think the Cameroon government is abusing the phenomenon of terrorism in Africa? Because if you label people who are not terrorists, terrorists, don't you think they are exploiting this far? The BIA government? Well... I mean, looking at your experience. As a Cameroonian by birth and origin, though being a United States citizen, I think the government, the Cameroon government, is supposed to look for a better a way of actually resolving this crisis. Okay. Look at me, you know, so innocent as I am. Mm -hmm. 
what do you think will be my own impression okay in me now with mm -hmm. regards to the situation back home okay don't you think if i, I was a Cameroon citizen or with the situation that i've gone through don't you think that is enough to radicalize me you tell us we don't know how you feel tell us how do yes, you feel yes that is enough you know to tell me oh yes for real then these guys have the right to do what they're doing because i saw it ordinary citizens okay some of those who are actually loyal okay. to the BR government okay. who got so maltreated. Mm -hmm. I'll quote you an example. Sure. The next morning, I was supposed to be released. I was released that same evening, but I couldn't go back to the village because at 8 o'clock, there is no circulation. Mm -hmm. So I was forced, the colonel took me to a jail, mm -hmm. kept me there under the guards of two gendarmes for protection okay. that he feared that something else might happen mm -hmm. because in his absence these guys might want to take an advantage mm -hmm. so in the morning when I was released I want to say that I will first of all thank him because he was kind enough to, to tell me certain truth thank you yeah I would actually appreciate him okay he spoke so reasonably mm -hmm. with me we confided in each other mm -hmm. and uh, when I went back to the village mm -hmm. Back in village, on my way back, I most of those gendarmes were surprised to see me alive. Okay. Yes. Because they knew you've been to the lion's yes, den. Yes. One of them, at uh, I don't really know the checkpoint. There are several checkpoints. You are not even with that within the villages. Okay. Told me, mon frère, tu es chanceux. Oui. He said that in French. Mm -hmm. That you are very lucky. You're fortunate. Mm -hmm. So by the time I got to the village, where I was residing, it was another catastrophe. Okay. While I was in the uh, going through the interrogation, mm -hmm. I, they took every information from me where I was residing. Mm -hmm. They went to that village. They beat everybody, the remaining villagers who could manage to be there within that time, because mm -hmm. most of the vill the villages honestly deserted. Yes. Only old ladies and I'll like, call the elderly people mm -hmm. who are sick, mm -hmm. who cannot actually work, mm -hmm. who were remaining there. Well. But some few youths who would dare the situation to come back in the evening mm -hmm. and then do some activities, then run and go back to the bush. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, most of them were met. They broke into all the doors, all the houses, mm -hmm. looted, mm -hmm. because I am a victim. Okay. I had $3,000 mm -hmm. in the house where I was residing, mm -hmm. all in a $100 notes. Mm -hmm. None of it was there. So they stole all your money? Everything. So the soldiers of Bias La Republique are thieves? My genome... But do you think these are soldiers or they are just thugs? Because soldiers are supposed I, to be disciplined. I, I think, I will take an example of the United States. Okay. My country of okay. nationality, of okay. nationalization, mm -hmm. where even if a police stops you, most often I have encountered a lot of them, they respectfully approach you. Okay. Even if I was a suspect, mm -hmm. as a say, or a spy, they would have actually asked my reasons for being there and give, uh, give me all the questions or what. I would have answered them, but that they, they didn't give any chance. So they just assume that you're a criminal. The, and I think that's the, the way it works. They just assume you're a criminal. And, and, really, even... and due to this, I can see how innocent people lose their lives. Okay. Because they beat everybody. My own junior brother, mm -hmm. who accompanied me mm -hmm. for one reason, because most of the youth were in there to help us to be able to put the grave and all other funeral things together was also severely beaten. Mm -hmm. A grandmother mm -hmm. who was sick, mm -hmm. residing in that same building, mm -hmm. was well beaten. Okay. And asked, when she asked that she wanted to go and ease herself in the bathroom, she was forced to ease herself in front of the genome. It's, oh. Uh, oh, it's, it's, so, it's, very, it's a pity. Okay. So, Mr. Charles Ekerum, you are a young person. God save you to give you more days so you can tell your story, live and tell your story. If you look at that camera, if you won't have a message for Paul Beer, what will you say? As a child who grew up in a disciplined home, as a child who grew up with respect for elders, as a child who also had a father who brought me up the right way, I think and I strongly believe I will tell my ex-president of the Republic of Cameroon, President Paul Beer. I'll speak to him with due respect as a father. As a father, first of all, 
not as before considered him as a president, that my dear, I will say my dear father, Mr. President Paul Beer of the Republic of Cameroon, to the best of my knowledge and respect, I will I duly appreciate if you can look for the best possible way to resolve this anglophone crisis. The best possible way for an outright, reasonable system or dialogue to be able to talk with the so concerned population of the Southwest and the Northwest region. Also, as the president of a republic, you have the due responsibility, not as only as a leader, but the elected leaders as servants of the people who elect you to, at a particular office to be able to serve for the interest of the people who are standing with you, who elected you, who you stand as a head of a country, as the first symbol or identity of those you represent. I would not denigrate you. On uh, every head that wears a crown, it's always not so easy. You as a father, I would want you to have the feelings of those who are going through the pains of the children they've lost, the children who've lost their own parents. Have that sympathy and empathy. A country is like a family, as the world today has become a global family. To reach, seek a reasonable solution, to be able to derive a better way to resolve this crisis. That is actually the advice I have. Et j'aimerais vraiment m'exprimer en français en tant qu'un Camerounais d'origine. Chercher un moyen très amical et possible pour pouvoir avoir une bonne résolution à cette situation qui est en train d'amener le Cameroun dans une situation incroyable. Surtout le nord-ouest et le sud-ouest. Rappelez-vous que vous avez visité Bamenda, le nord-ouest, et aussi Boya, quand vous avez pris le pouvoir. Ces gens t'ont soutenu, et le Cameroun en général t'ont soutenu. Mon cher ex-président, et le père de la famille, s'il vous plaît, avec tout ton entourage, j'aimerais vous dire encore et une fois de plus en français, le dialogue, le pardon et la réconciliation sont le meilleur pour le Cameroun. Comme vous-même vous avez dit, le Cameroun, c'est le Cameroun. Le Cameroun a mis nature. Cherchons et chercher le moyen le, le plus possible de pouvoir avoir une bonne résolution de cette crise anglophone, de cette crise qui pourra un jour aussi amener les francophones dans une crise pareille. Nous ne voulons pas ça. Les Camerounais en général aiment la paix. Avec l'amour, il y a la paix. Avec la paix, tout est vraiment possible. Je vous remercie avec plein de respect. I say thanks with much respect. God bless. Thank you very much, Mr. Charles Ekerum. We thank you for really coming here today to tell your story. And we're going to also show the images. You represent the new Cam Cameroon of the future. You are doing a whole lot. Most people don't even know who you are. I know you've told your story, but people need to know who you are. I understand that 
uh, your father was the founder of Vocas. You are the son of the founder of Vocas, which is a technical college. What can you tell us about your father and your mother? Well, I would want to first of all say, uh, may the soul of my father and my mom rest in perfect peace. Okay. My father was my role model. Okay. My father taught me about honesty. My father taught me about respect. He taught me about the importance of education. He taught me about the importance of humility. Well, my father studied in Great Britain, where he had his doctorate degree in business management. Uh, my dad, particularly, I would say, was a founder director general of Vocas Moyoka, which is an acronym, Vocas, Vocational College of Arts, Science, and Technology. Okay. And when my dad passed away, I took over the entire uh, running of the, co of the college. Okay. A year after, I moved to the United States, by okay. the grace of God, where I had to leave the management of the establishment to my junior brother. So we worked hand in hand in coordination. Yeah, and I knew about your role in vocals through some of the ex-students. Okay. So in addition to assisting in the management of vocals, what are you doing in the United States as a U.S. citizen? What are you doing? Well. I want to first of all thank God for bringing me to the United States. But presently, as of now in the United States, I'm a final year student in Prince George's Community College okay. in the Department of Engineering and Information Technology. I'm majoring in construction management okay. to become a construction manager. Mm -hmm. When I first got to the United States, I worked for reasons of commercialization. I would not mention the name, but I worked for a construction company mm -hmm. as a construction inspector okay but this i could not move much further because i didn't have any certification okay so i decided to go back to school and to have my degree mm -hmm. in uh, construction management mm -hmm. that way it will be able i'll be able to actually pave my way through easily so what has your american experience taught you that you can take to vocas oh yeah uh, it has taught me a lot Technologically, I say America is much more advanced. And in collaboration with the VOSANS, VOCAS Ex Students Association, both in the diaspora and locally back home in Cameroon, we're trying as much as possible to see how we can revamp the institution. Okay. And to finally transform, not only transform, but to add a higher level, make VOCAS also have a polytechnic. Okay. So if somebody wants to assist you in furthering the education of students in Bocas, how can they contact you? Well, they can contact, contact me through my email. Okay. Yeah, which is, uh, I don't know if you might permit me yeah, to. Yeah, please, go uh, ahead. Charles Ekeron 983 at gmail.com or directly through my phone number, which is 240-413-0455. And I know you also have a Facebook uh, profile, yes, so I people do. can also contact you on Facebook. Certainly, who are interested, sure. Right? Probably. Okay, so we'll, we'll be able to share that with our audience. Correct? Very correct. Yeah. So I know they, they beat you blue. They beat me to death. <laughs> but I'm I was to death. Sorry. I did. I'm happy at least you are smiling. I'm but smiling. something most people don't know. First that of all, I the music. I will say, Mister. When Big Brother Prince, you are a sober like me. Yes. I want first of all respect that. Okay. Yeah, because I went to St. Joseph's College Sasse, for you. three years, and when my dad discovered that I was much more inclined to technical education, mm -hmm. I was much much technical. He took me off from Sasse College uh -huh. and put me into vocals, mm -hmm. and I realized I found my real potentials. I found my talents, mm -hmm. and uh, I want to reiterate one thing here. Okay. I used to hear the big people up and tell them to uh, denounce the uh, American citizens. No, not that. They asked me that to do so. I told them, no, I can't. But moreover, they are really... So they asked you to because denounce... Because at every point in time so, when I... So they asked you to denounce your citizenship? I said no. And also asked you to denounce your religion? Yes. So what do they want you to so become? Because it got to a point when they were beating me up. Mm -hmm. I was only... All I could say was Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Jesus. And I heard one of them said in French, French uh -huh. Il l'appelle même quoi? Jesus. 
Qu'est-ce qu'il dit même Il dit, maintenant, tu vas aller à Allah. On va tirer sur toi maintenant. Est-ce est que le nom était musulman Ou bien, I, il s'en fout Non, je pense qu'il était musulman. Non, il était musulman. C'est ce que je lui ai dit. Même si je vais à Allah, il est encore Dieu. La différence est que Mohammed est un prophète. Merci. Mais Jésus Christ, en qui je crois, en qui je crois, est un fils de Dieu. Et il a délivré à trois personnes. Amen. Dans le nom du Père, du Son et du Holy Spirit. J'ai dit, même si je suis mort, je vais mourir avec le monde, avec Jésus Christ. Et d'abord, je ne sais pas d'où ça vient, mais ce courage était comme un autre esprit qui est venu sur moi. J'ai dit, d'abord, je ne vais pas mourir, mais je vais vivre pour déclarer les bonnes œuvres de Dieu dans ma vie. Alléluia, alléluia, amen, amen, alléluia, alléluia. Il a dit, il a dit en français de nouveau. Il parle même, hein. Je dis, oui, je vais parler. Ils me frappent et ils me prennent un match. Et je vais dire, comme Jésus a dit, Dieu, pardonne-les. Oh, c'est bien. La forgiveness est très importante. Pardonne-les. Oh, bien. C'est ce que je dis. Pour bien, apprenez la forgiveness. Apprenez la forgiveness. Apprenez la forgiveness. Et quand je dis que je suis juste resté quiet, par la grâce de Dieu, je priais sans moi. And God, they said he exalted his word, exactly. his name of his word, and so it came to pass. Thank so you very much. I want to thank you very much. No, no problem. And what most of the time you guys may not know is Mr. Charles Ekerum is also a musician and a singer. So I think the best way to end this show is by introducing you to his music. Okay. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. Mm -hmm. You can you sing a little bit or something? Sometimes in life, when all seems to go wrong, and you feel all hope is gone away, just look inside you and be strong, and believe it when you pray. And the faith in what you are asked from God. God of the friend, indeed, is a friend in need. He will reach out a helping hand for you to hold and be sure that everything's gonna be alright. I just want to thank God. Well, this song is a special song I made when I was released. Thank you. Just to acknowledge God and to give him thanks and praises for giving me a, another chance to live, another chance to evangelize, another chance to touch lives, another chance to use this as a testimony to bring those Amen. who don't believe and those Amen. who don't think Jesus Christ works miracles. Amen. His word says. Amen. Amen. He works in ways that we cannot see. Amen. With love and strength, God, Amen. He will always make a way. Amen. The Bible says, Call upon me and I will answer thee. Inasmuch as you put your trust in me, I shall not leave nor forsake thee. Amen. It takes one thing. Amen. Have faith, Amen. trust, and believe in Him. Thank you very to much, God be the Mr. Thank you, very Thank you very much. Thank you very much, folks. Thank you for coming. We are very happy with you. Thank, Thank you, you very too much. Thank you very much, and I yeah. want to Glory thank each and God. everyone out there telling Jesus you how to speak us. That may God bless you. May God continuously enrich you. May he open great doors for you. May he preserve your life. May your going out and your coming in be preserved by him. Always look up to the hills from where your help comes from. Our help comes from the Lord. He will never leave nor forsake us in as much as we put our trust in him. He's Amen. our rock of refuge. Amen. A strong and mighty man in battle. The I am that I am. The Amen. father of the fatherless. Amen. His name be praised. Amen. Thank you very much, Thank Lord. You. Thank you.